Hello, my name's Carol. This is my channel, Sew Carol, and you are joining me in my sewing room for Hashtag Friday Sews. Now, I'm sure we all know by now, but Hashtag Friday Sews was started by the wonderful Jen in today and Jen's sewing room. And it was an idea she had to create a hashtag to get all us sewists together across the world. Easy to find if you just type it into the search bar you will get so is talking normally on a Friday, but sometimes the weekend, talking about what they've been up to, sewing, what they might have been buying, or then just chatting a tiny little bit about life. So fantastic place to find us all. So this is my sewing room, and there's been lots of sewing and lots of mending, um, and a few other things <laughs> this week. Do you remember last week we did a day, you know, day-to-day -day filming, and I wanted to make one of these simplicity 8556 and i went through my wardrobe and i didn't have anything just happened to be in my tiny little uh, fabric uh, crafty shop this week and saw this piece of viscose jersey now i have made something from this before but i can't remember what so it must have been for my daughter that's the only thing because i certainly haven't got anything in my wardrobe from it um, so yeah, nice bit of viscose jersey and that will make Simplicity 8556. However, hang tight, I want to show you one of the things I had to mend this week. When I was sorting out my autumn wardrobe, I came across this top that I made in a viscose jersey. Uh, when I originally made this in a woven, I used a size 8 which was a little bit tight on me so I tended to then size up. But when I obviously made this, because it was a viscose jersey, very, very sloppy, it was too wide here. It was just ridiculous. It just kept slipping off. Um, I'll put a picture on, on, the, on the mannequin before I changed it. I've now made uh, four pleats on the front. I know it's difficult to, to see, but I've now got, it's much narrower here and I put small little, four small little pleats in. So I'm really pleased with that. So I can now wear that. So what else did I mend this week? Well, I've got some running trousers that um, it's got a foam pocket in the back and last year the zip broke on it. I did order another pair um, and I used them, but I never threw the other pair away. And I was looking at it the other day and I was thinking, can't be that tricky to put a new zip in. Well, I've done it and oh my goodness, it's the worst thing ever. Um, it was impossible to try and slot this uh, zip in. By the time I got the zip out of this, it has torn a lot of the fabric. Um, but, oh gosh, let's do it up. It looks a bit better when it's done up. Um, yeah, it's in, it looks awful. But at the end of the day, I've always got something over the top and it does now do the job and I can use this pair of trousers rather than throwing them away. Now, uh, last week I held up a pair of um, green linen shorts that I managed to get a stain on of some sort, something like a sticky sap or something, obviously where I sat down when we were on holiday. I was going to make another pair um, a couple of viewers actually had the most amazing idea is why don't I either put a patch on top of it or embroidering something over the top and that is what I did in the end I have embroidered something over it now this was quite brave for me um, I love them they're very different but this is what I have done I have embroidered randomly these small little flowers on these shorts. I was always worried these shorts looked a little bit manly, um, so actually <laughs> it's made them look quite feminine. And if I show you on the back, that was where the stain was. There's absolutely no way you can see that now. I am so pleased. It was extremely difficult to put these in the <laughs> embroidery machine on the frame I had to do each one individually and I think there's 22 on there so that means you kind of load it, you set it, you take it out, you take all the stuff off, you do the next one. It took me forever. I 
by the time I got to the back, I have to admit, I, I got a bit fed up. I couldn't do the pockets, obviously, unless I took the pockets off. Um, so that was a bit of a shame, but I always wear a t-shirt over the back anyway. So I didn't do any up here. Um, so I've cut cheat a bit there. I've cut it short on the back, but on the front, I did manage to work around the pockets. So I think they look quite fun now and I'm really pleased. I managed to do something this week as well, which I've been meaning to do for a long, long time. This is a vest, a uh, store-bought vest I have had for a long time. I've got quite a few of them, but they are beginning to look really shabby. And all through the kind of autumn, winter, um, even into spring, I tend to wear a vest under a t-shirt because I'm always feeling the cold. But as they're looking quite shabby, I thought I want to take a pattern from one of these and have a go at making one up. So that is what I did. Now I'm gonna put a tiny bit of film in here of how I did it super simple and I know most of you know how to do it so don't forget if you ever I normally put chapters in the bottom so if you want to skip this bit have a look down below and then um, you can skip it in case you're you know an expert at copying um, store-bought things but I will put in how I normally do it so using a table saver that I've got which is marvelous for just kind of um, sticking pins in and keeping stuff it's got that sort of felt background it's quite a thick thing we've had it for decades but i just use that and i pin out it looks quite cruel but i pinned out the vest i want to copy i haven't stretched it i've just kind of made sure that it's holding and doesn't fold in and just to do the back i'm going to draw around i will then add my seam allowance on as well and then I'll do the same for the front. Obviously, it's going to drop down lower there. I have to zoom in so you can see the lines. But you can see I've just done a dotted outline, which is um, just the back, how I've gone round it. And I'm going to use my seam allowance rulers, which I got from Etsy, I think. Stitch Buzz or something like that. I use them for my Latilo. They're five eighths of an inch. So what I'm going to do now is follow the lines that I've got there, but just adding the um, seam allowance. So I'll put a solid line there. There we go, my two bits cut out. My front to be cut on the fold, my back to be cut on the fold. This was the notch I cut out and I redrew the line. Uh, that's the actual um, garment line and that's the seam allowance. So I can get rid of that now and I've got my two pieces. So easy peasy very cheap vest pattern so this was the finished result which i am so pleased with so i've got this pattern now just two pieces and um, whenever i get any cotton jersey i can make some more up so this was a just a piece of cotton jersey i had ideally i would normally do some kind of uh, neutral color but it was worth trying um, the only thing that came out a bit wider was the uh, shoulder seams, but it's a super nice close fitting vest and yeah, I was really, really happy with that. It was such an easy little thing to do. I put a video out on Tuesday and that was the results of the collab I did with Izzy and that was the Parker Ponty trousers. I'll put the link to both of our videos down below. But yeah, it was a style arc pattern. We both had a go at making. Both of us had quite a bit of a journey. Certainly Izzy had way more of a journey than I did. I had a much easier ride. But out of it, we did get some really nice pairs of trousers. So in fact, I'm wearing mine right now. Um, so yeah, go and check that video out if you didn't manage to see it. Also, next week, I'm posting a video on the results of my fabric wheel of fate where it landed on <laughs> I haven't got much left uh, on this uh, double faced bit of fabric here this knit sort of fabric spots stripes so please check that out next week because I had a lot of fun with it and of course in the video I spin the wheel for the next fabric um, I'm not going to share with you now what it is I know now um, but yeah have a look at that video next week Okay, it's behind me, I have to show you now. This is a result of, um, when I was going through my stash the other day um, of some fat squares, fat quarters I had, 
I came across an autumn bundle that I bought when I was in America from Walmart and I, and I hadn't used them and I thought what do I need? I need something for autumn but I didn't need a basket or mats or anything like that and the one thing I really did need was a new apron. Now I've got a couple but they're both quite disgusting. The last one I made was this one and this might give you a hint to the last time I made an apron if you see what's on there. It was a millennium fabric, the year 2000. Um, we were entertaining and I decided to make uh, quickly make an apron. But yeah, so that's 23 years ago. Um, I, I think what I must have done is just draw around an apron I had. So that's exactly what I did. And I made this. Now, I, this was so much fun to make. So it's obviously out of fat squares and I had to, I kind of cut them in strips um, and I kind of pieced them all together to make it as wide as I could. Um, so it's full cut fat quarters there. Obviously I had um, got a bit short on the sides so I had to be a bit creative with the curve there. And I got this, the um, tie and the necktie is done in the same fabric. And then I got a pocket on the front, but yeah. I had so much fun doing this and um, I'm really pleased that I have got a new apron to wear which is very seasonal. Do you remember that world jersey fabric I had? This is the result of what I've made from it. This is new look six something something six <laughs> six five three six. I've made this pattern before and I made this version here but it was really wide on me and came up quite high and wide and it wasn't very nice at all. So on the packet, I actually made a note to do the V-neck this time with the gathered sleeves. And that is what I've done. Now, what it's gonna be is gonna be a kind of bikini swimsuit cover up for by the pool. And I'm really, really pleased with it. Initially, I said, I'm gonna have to be careful where I put the countries and things like that. I didn't, it was it was just too much hard work. Um, so at the moment I've got two Greenlands, and two Canadas, but then I liked Canada, didn't I? And then I used the pinky bit for the, the world bit at the bottom. I will put some footage in of me wearing it, but yeah. So on the back, we've got good old America, on Australia, um, and Russia on, on the bottom. Um, so, Oh look, some tailor tacks still stuck in it. But yeah, I'm really, really pleased with it. I love the colors. It's all kind of sorbet, ice creamy colors. Um, it's gonna be fabulous. We're actually going away in a couple of weeks time. So I'm gonna have the chance to wear this. But this does give me a kind of an 80s vibe having these um, up here, these, but it does make it look um, a lot more flattering. So yeah, that was a new look. A couple of weeks ago, the lovely Adam from Adam Sews uh, released a new pattern, the Luna Cross Body Bag. And I think I showed you my version last week. I also showed you some cork fabric. Um, and even I think while I was filming it, I had the idea to make a bag using that cork fabric. Now I've never sewn with it before. Um, I don't know if many of you have, but it certainly surprised me on how easy it was to you work with. I'm going to show you a bag now and I have got permission from Adam to show it to you because I did have to alter it slightly, his design. Um, it hasn't got a strap yet. I'm really on the fence about what to do and in fact I've just ordered a strap from Amazon for now um, because I didn't quite know what to kind of strap to put with it. But I am really, really pleased with this. Here we have it. So yeah, it's awaiting the strap at the moment but I used that pattern cork on the bottom and on the back and the plain bit here. Um, it's still got the two pockets. I did quilt inside as well. So it's still got the quilting, the batting and quilting um, and up there as well. That's all quilted. But if you notice from his original pattern has um, binding around the outside, I couldn't work out the best way to do that and what would look right on top of the cork. So as I was kind of doing it, I thought, I wonder what it would look like if I flipped it inside. 
So I quickly sewed it round and then turned it inside out. And I thought, actually, I really like that. So <laughs> that is how it has stayed. Um, the corners weren't rounded off. They've just been rounded off because it's actually quite hard to turn the cork fabric back in. Um, but it's it's made it absolutely lovely. The only thing I would say is because I it's all worked with this so much this cork fabric is kind of rumpled a bit there um, it may have been where I stuck it to the uh, quilting I don't know um, or maybe it's a bit softer than this one um, in hindsight I would have liked to put a little bit of an embroidery design on there but way too late now but yeah I am very pleased with this lovely little bag as I said I'm waiting for a strap so um, I can wear it but yeah it was so thank you so much Adam for this pattern because I would never have known where to start on making a crossbody bag um, especially not a double pocket one and I um, hope you like my version of his adaptive pattern but yeah I have to say I didn't think I'd be able to sew through multiple layers of cork and quilting and batting but yes my machine actually did it there's something about this cork fabric which makes it quite easy and the needle just goes through. So I cannot believe I managed to sew all these layers on my machine that is normally very temperamental. So my new little holiday bag and I did binding inside without any fuss at all. So yeah, thank you Adam. Now talking about Adam, on Saturday, he is holding a sewing social day and I am so excited because he lives about mm, just under an hour away from me. Um, he's hosting a social day all day on Saturday. Um, I can't wait. I really can't wait to uh, see everybody else and uh, sew all day. What I'm gonna take with me, um, I'm not gonna take any garments to make because I kind of want my overlocker as well, my serger. So what I'm going to do is something that's been in my to-do pile for a long time. As I don't know if you remember, a long time ago I made this Burda uh, 9276, this bag for myself. It's just like a mini toiletry bag. My husband was quite envious of it, um, just when he goes away for sort of one night. And I've even had the two pieces of fabric put aside with the pattern for months and months. So I thought, that will be a nice little project to take with me because it's fairly easy and it means that I can chat and not worry about um, extra machines and things and, and tools to take with me. So I uh, hopefully I'm planning to do that but yeah I can't wait for Saturday. I've been a bit of a mean grandma this time round with Halloween because the older grandson's costume from last year still fits him. Um, he's wearing that and they're only going trick-or-treating for say an hour or two, maybe one, half an hour, an hour. So I really didn't want to do weeks and weeks of costume designing for just that half an hour. I know, I mean, I'm sorry. So what my daughter did was get an outfit very cheaply off Amazon and I'm just gonna be adding some embroidery onto it. Um, the little one wanted to be Lightning Queen, so she's got like a car racing, driver if, if I finish the embroidery by the time this goes up I will put a picture in but yeah she just wants me to put sort of Lightning McQueen on this hat and on the back and his name of this kind of racing driver outfit so that's all I'm doing this year so I'm getting off quite easy we had a really good weekend very musical filled weekend last week we first of all on Friday night we went to London to the O2 to see Luke Combs now he was absolutely fantastic he's an american uh, country star uh really top of the charts absolutely brilliant uh we all love him as a family um we got the tickets because my son and my daughter-in-law decided that just with a tiny baby as they still have they couldn't escape for a evening so we managed to get the tickets from them and we went now we came back on saturday from london um and Saturday night we went to a completely different concert it was um, my friend from orchestra she's a fellow oboe player she also has a ha in a handbell choir and I didn't know what to expect 
but it was absolutely fantastic. They played a whole wide variety of music, covered all genres, and that was amazing. That was as good as our concert at the O2. It was brilliant, so really musical field weekend. I do hope to get a little bit of sewing done next week. I got um, some really cosy fabric that I want to make another toaster sweater from. And yes, I know it's an indie pattern, but I have had it a quite a while um, and I have made a few toaster sweaters before, but I think this particular fabric will really lend itself well to it. So yeah, I've got a few things to be getting on with and we are going away, not this weekend, but next weekend for a week. We're going down to the Canaries, so the summer stuff will be coming back out again. But yeah, I wanna make sure I've got some nice cozy stuff made to come home to. Now, I am wearing another of these Butterick 6859, I think it is. I will put it in the description box below. But this was one that I made out of this beautiful double brush poly that I bought from Joanne's, I think in March this year. Um, I know I've actually seen um, another vlogger somewhere actually have this fabric and it is absolutely super. But yeah, it just lends itself so well to the design of this with the kind of gathering here in the raglan sleeve. I've got some more double brush poly. I just can't wait to make another of these. They've got the knitted cuffs and the knitted waist and it's just so cozy. So I think that's it for me this week. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, don't forget to check out the um, Izzy and my collab video this week. And also keep your eye out for my Fabric Wheel of Fate video next week. I'm going to leave you with some photos. Now, I'm afraid it is that time of year again when mushrooms and fungi are popping up in the forest over the road. And there's something about me that I am addicted to taking photos of mushrooms. If I come across one that I haven't taken a photo of, I, I need to take a photo of it. So it is that time of year, I think I did it at the same time last year, where I'm going to show you all the different mushrooms that I have come across in the forest over the road. So I hope you enjoy those. Thank you again. Have a marvellous, marvellous weekend and week ahead. And I will see you all very soon. Bye bye for now. Thank you.